today I'm going to be making music with the Game Boy Camera. What? So for anyone who is not aware, not only can this amazing piece of technology take some of the best photos that I've ever seen, it also has a completely unnecessary and surprisingly in-depth music making minigame which allows you to create your own chiptune songs which considering the technology is actually pretty amazing. In fact, some people might even say that it is nearly as amazing as the sponsor of today's video, Melodix. Melodix makes it easy to learn a range of MIDI controlled instruments through the use of their free to download program. Thanks to the huge selection of courses and lessons, Melodix can help build your musical skills no matter how much previous experience you have. Now I know what you are thinking. I'm interested in learning music but I just wish the process was fun and this intimidate. Well, Melodix helps solve this by treating the learning process as a rhythm game, which not only makes it more enjoyable, but can also provide real-time feedback so you can see exactly where you need to improve. And if you are still struggling to hit those notes, you can slow things down to the speed that you're more comfortable with, or, I mean, you can also speed things up if you're into that. So anyway, if you're looking to get skills like me, then click the link down in the description to download Melodix for free. Now, let's go ahead and get started. Oh yeah, Game Boy Camera complete with a Dancing Mario, <laughs> nice. So let's make our way over to the music making mini games. We just need to shoot this thing over there, just like that. And here we go. Make your own beats as the DJ. Now let's just go ahead and select a new save file or a new cool data, whatever one you want to call it. Now you got the choice of three different DJing characters. These first two are included with the mini game. They're just default. But then over here we have this third one, the question mark, which actually lets you take photos from your Game Boy camera library and use them as the face for your character. Now because this camera is second hand and already has a whole bunch of photos which are probably taken back in the late 90s and were never deleted by whoever owned this thing before me, today I'm going to be DJing as random kid with a hat. <laughs> nice. But anyway, this is the DJing section for the music making mini game. Now this is where you can trigger your different instrument loops to arrange your song. These instruments include four different channels. So we've got two different oscillators and we've also got this noise channel here. And the final one, sound effects. Oh yeah. There we go. Now to finish things off, we have this BPM slider over here. If you want to speed things up, you can actually go pretty fast and your character moves faster as you speed it up. Hey, random kid with hat is going crazy. Anyway, that is going to do it for the DJ arranging section. Let's move over to the sequencer. Let's start making some melodies. So here we've got ourselves a 16 step sequencer. Now, if you want to add in a note, you just need to choose your step and then hold the A button while moving this cursor along the bottom to choose whatever notes you want. Now, I think this process works well enough, but I could imagine it getting really annoying if you're trying to make a song with higher notes all the way up here. But I guess that is a little bit nitpicky. Overall, I'm just happy that they actually have a decent range of notes. What is that, like three octaves? Yeah, not too bad. Oh yeah. There we go. Now this little melody is just being played with the default square wave sound. But if you aren't happy with that sound, you can actually go through and change things up quite a bit. So for this channel here, you can choose between three different square wave sounds. And over here we have the envelope as well as the gate controls and these basically just let you change the length and the shape of the notes which are being played. Moving on to the modulation section. So this basically just lets you put an LFO onto the pitch. You can also change the LFO's shape, speed, as well as the intensity to make some pretty interesting sounds. That is sounding nice and spooky. I like it. And then finally we have this little controller here which just allows you to change the length of your loop. It's not that exciting. Oh, that sounds bad. <laughs> anyway, that is actually going to do it for the first square wave channel. So let's go ahead and move on to the second channel. Whoa. So this one is basically the same as the last one, except this time there is a little bit of a change with the oscillators. You still get three, except with this third one, you can actually go through and change the shape of it yourself. Wait, I might need some notes. Yeah, that is sounding pretty bad, <laughs> either way, even though it takes really long to put the sounds together, I still think it's a pretty amazing feature. 
Oh, that sounds bad. Now moving on to the third and final sequencer, we have a noise channel. So all of the sequencer controls are still exactly the same, except this time we just get a whole bunch of noise, which comes in handy for things like percussion. But anyway, that is a quick little rundown of how the sequencer works in the Game Boy Camera music making mini game. Now, why don't we actually go ahead and start making some music? Now, I think I might actually kick things off by bringing in some drums. So let's just go over to the noise channel. Then I might actually start off with some snares. Well, that sounds like a pretty decent snare. And maybe some hi-hats. Hey, that sounds pretty decent. Now, I think I'm just gonna move over to the second sound generator and I think I might use this one for a bass line. Let's just make these notes a little bit longer and we should be good to go. Hey, I can't do too much on them because it's so short. Maybe I'll throw some modulation onto it. Okay, I'm having second thoughts. This channel here sounds really bad. Let's just get rid of that for now. I think I'll actually end up using the second channel for the melody and we'll use sound channel one for the bass line. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. Let's just change up the envelope. That should be done. Oh, I'm actually liking that wave there. Okay, that sounds pretty decent. Let's move over to sound channel two. <laughs> Let's try this again. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, it sounds so bad. What am I doing? Get out of here. <laughs> oh, why can you not change the volume of this one? Why can't you only change the gate? Oh, everything I do just sounds horrible. Uh, that doesn't sound too bad. Yeah, I actually quite like that. I think I might just need to switch up the wave shape a little bit and that should pretty much be it. Yeah, that is sounding pretty decent. It's just a little bit short. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got all of my instruments done. Let's go over to the DJing mode and let's try and mix the song. bad at all, especially these sound effects. <laughs> now, I think the only problem that I'm having with this is that the songs are way too short. So what I might do for this next one is I might slow things down a bit. So let's just take the tempo as low as it can go. Wow. Okay. <laughs> that can go a lot slower than I was expecting. But now at least I should be able to make a song that's a little bit longer than just 16 steps. I mean, it'll still just be 16 steps, but at least these steps will be a whole lot slower. Okay. So I'm just trying to do a drum beat. I have to put my snares really close together. But at least it works. Doesn't sound too bad. And I guess I can put my hi-hats in there. <laughs> that is so slow. Oh no. It takes so long for it to get back to the start. Now because the song is a whole lot slower, I should actually be able to do some sort of chord progression, hopefully. That is not sounding bad at all. I think I just need to put some envelope onto it, just make it fade in a little bit. Oh, yeah. Let's try changing the square wave. That one's a lot fatter. I think it's a little bit too loud, but oh well, it should be good enough. Let's move on to the final sound. Actually, now that I think about it, that might be a little bit too slow. Let's try to speed things up a bit. That's better. Okay, I think that should pretty much be it for this. I can't actually do as much as I was expecting to with the longest song. 
I still only have 16 steps. But anyway, let's head over to the DJ section and let's mix this song. Now the fade-ins and fade-outs are going to be extremely slow. That should be fine. Let's do this. Or maybe not. So I was just about to start recording in the arrangement for the second song and I accidentally quit the minigame without saving it. So I had to go through and try to remake my entire song, but I got a little bit carried away and I made things a whole lot better. So that is why the song is completely different to what I was making earlier. But oh well, we should be all good. Now, let's try arrange the song. So there we go. That was the Game Boy, the Game Boy Camera music making mini game. Now I'm glad that I finally got to make this video. I've had it planned for a really long time, but the only thing was, it's really hard to find a box for one of these in Australia, especially one in this good a condition. Looks really good. And I've probably just ruined that by throwing it around so much. But anyway, I think it was well worth the wait. I mean, even though all the songs you're gonna be making are only gonna be 16 steps, I still think the technology is pretty cool, especially considering the fact that it is over 20 years old. Well, I guess only the music maker is impressive. The camera technology did not age too well. But anyway, I think that's gonna wrap it up for this video. So I'll see all of you in the next couple of days for my next upload. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye.